Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're catching up on some juicy gist that has been going on for a couple of days now. Now we're going to get started by talking about the developers meeting note that took place on the 8th of June 2020. First of all, you know, there was a huge shout out and they also talked about the Blender 2.83 which was released. You know, this is the first version that has the LTS and of course they went ahead to make some clarifications. Now I'm going to put a link in the description where you can find the clarifications that pertains to regression and also how to handle reports and get certain things fixed so just in case you want to read up now next up was the discussion about USD and this was alongside the guys from Tangent Animation Lab now the whole idea for the universal scene description is something that the guys from Tangent Lab has been working on now if you remember with Blender 2.83 release we did see a USD support that was available for Blender now this USD support was for Blender 2.83 being able to export USD but then of course there was no impact and certain things were not really structured you know since it's still within its beta so the guys went ahead to talk about certain stuff and they actually made mention that since they have similar ideas they're looking forward to share some concrete technical and workflow ideas also create some short and long term goals within the development of the USD support and USD based pipeline. All of these things that they will be dealing with will be open but if the guys from Blender Foundation want to simply keep things on the hush hush between them and Tangent Lab they will simply acknowledge that and I know for sure that Blender Foundation has been very open with their development so of course this is not going to be a problem whatsoever. Within the time they actually talked about the implementation for export and import they were also looking at the same you know model that they worked with while creating the exporter so since the guys at tangent lab actually created the exporter based off of the alembic they are also thinking about maybe doing the same thing for the importer and also basing these based off blenders alembic import code but of course the import code is something that they're actually you know restructuring in a no distant future they are also thinking about the limitations that this is going to provide and you know certain practical stuff that will limit the importer to do some things on the other hand they're also saying they're going to go ahead and create this stuff and they will make it public within their github so when you go over to the github you see they've already created a branch and also setting information and now the status simply says work in progress from what they are actually talking about right here they're saying this is going to be available sometime next week so just in case you would like to get you know this and also play with it it is going to be available for you to have access with. and while they were still discussing about this they also talked about usd support for cycles now they are looking at a way of creating a hydra delegate for cycles so you'll be able to render your usd file by using cycles instead of converting it back to blender native file first and then rendering with that of course this is going to expedite you know fast track how much time you spend trying to work with these things as converting this might actually take a longer time than just simply you know hitting the render button and using the hydra delegate that they're trying to create now this is where it even becomes interesting because while they were still talking about the usd stuff and you know coming to a conclusion we saw a pretty cool stuff within the comment section now within the comment section the guys from amd showed up and they said they are looking at how they would get a usd slash hydra rendering engine to be available right in blender so i think this is where the whole collaboration thing makes a lot of sense because it's been long i did see a company talk with another company and they actually came up with something pretty cool so the whole openness the whole open source thing simply makes a lot of sense and i'm very grateful to both the guys at tangent lab and also amd for not just supporting but also helping to develop blender to become even way better than it was before so if you simply go over to the link which they provided you will see that there is already a discussion going on about it and this is pretty much what this might simply look like so we already have the hydra right here we have the merging usd where you can merge several usd files and this might just simply make a lot of sense so i'm also going to put a link in the description just in case you want to read about this last time we talked about yimin who continuing developments for you know the lamp pr and as well there has also been a couple of bugs and a number of bugs were mentioned about blender 2.83 upon release last week and this in itself has doubled the number of bugs that they have actually received over a period of time now they've also had some pretty cool stuff that has to do with corrective release and there was a discussion about that and there is also a contact person known as Jerome blender 2.9 was now discussed about and there were certain things that was talked about one of them was the roadmap and then the lie actually went ahead to make certain suggestions about moving the model information to the project page 
as you can see right here so this is more like what he feels that it should be like so when you're dealing with motion dragging it should be within the project and yes for sure this is going to be for easy access the google summer of code is still going on certain people are working on stuff we've already talked about this over and over and this is the part where you guys will definitely want to see some pretty cool stuff now let's talk about the cool features and they include performance user interface in quotes others that consist of both the rendering for cycles overrides grease pencil and also the sculpting improvements for the pose ik so talking about the performance right now when you're trying to undo stuff for both renaming and removing object it is pretty faster for you to get this going for the viewport right now there is a multi-thread mesh gpu batch computation there's also some updates to the modifiers which has to do with more efficient multi-threading for modifiers using bvh lookups for things like you know shrink wrap modifier and of course the modifiers now have a pretty cool update as they can now display as panels with support for drag and drop and also the color picker update is one of those ones that you might not really call anything but for the most part if you're into texturing drawing picking colors from different windows you would find this one interesting as if you're working with blender 2.83 you would not be able to select colors from a different blender window as whenever you simply go ahead and select it converts the color to blue if you're doing this with the recent version of blender 2.9 build which i'm also going to put a link in the description where you can get it it is quite easy for you to get this going now this is going to be very useful for a lot of people if you're trying to do lights if you're trying to do you know texturing if you're also trying to play with uh, materials and stuff this is also going to be very useful next up is cycles so the last time where we talked about cycles we talked about you know cycles having some pretty cool features and functions that you can simply get up and running on your viewport and we're talking about nothing more than the viewport denoising but right now you can simply get the optics denoising on all nvidia gpu cards that simply supports it now this is for the maxwell architecture cards or higher cards that includes the geforce 700 800 900 and also 1000 series so in case you have like a 1080 it, you'll probably be able to make use of your nvidia gpu to get cool the noising directly on your viewport the nv link is also something that has been supported so in case you're trying to you know work with multi gpu cards you can now nv link them this is a cool feature that was just recently implemented in keyshot 9 and it's very interesting to see that we have that now the grease pencil now has pretty cool support for fill areas instead of selecting these things by hand you can simply select a certain path directly on the fill area and you can select the entire border within the sculpting section there is also a tiny bit of updates and for the overrides there's pretty cool updates for the overrides so in case you want to simply get some cool overrides across you know your constraints your camera your modifiers and so on this is now available and you can simply get the most out of it now with this said let's dive directly into a pretty cool feature that is now available in blender 2.9 but of course it's not available for the entire build so i'm just going to you know focus and talk about this particular build which i'm going to put a link in the description for you to take a look at so with blender open here we're going to take a look at the pretty cool new sky texture that is now available for blender so what i'm going to do is just simply press n on the keyboard go over to the traffic plugin so just in case you haven't seen this plugin i'm gonna put a link in the description where you can see it and you can see we have some pretty cool car right here next thing which i would like to do is just go ahead and get a tiny plane let's scale this plane a little bit something like that now with the new sky feature that you have right here you can simply simulate pretty cool sky of course this feature has been existing previously in blender but there is a pretty cool improvement to it so if i simply go over to the shaders switch over to world i can go all the way here and simply add the texture and add the sky texture now you probably know about this the pretem you also know about the hosek but then there is a brand new one known as the nishita now the nishita is a brand new sky type that is now available so i can simply switch this to cycle as this is more visible in cycle than you can get with you know um ev so with this here we can simply go around and you can take a look at what we have so if i go through and turn this off you would notice that we simply have the nishita in action even without the sun disk so you have the option of turning this on and off as the sun disk enables you to actually get the disk lighting that is coming from the sun you can also play with the sun size in case you want but this is only active when the sun disk is turned on 
You can also choose to play with the air if the air is also what you want. You can change the air however you want. You can also choose to throw in a couple of dust and then you can choose to play with your zone. So this is all up to you and how you want to get your stuff going. Let's simply make this floor reflective and I'm just going to add this right there and simply turn on the metallic just a little bit so let's get that there and also turn down the roughness all right so let's simply do that so with this now we can have a different kind of sky at any point so if you're trying to simulate real sky then you can go ahead and do that of course if you want to play with the previous versions you can simply use the pretam and get something going like that this is also cool or you can simply use the hosek and also you know play with something like this and get this going for the most part you may have seen a lot of these ones but then this new feature right here for me simply you know rocks and if you're into playing with stuff like this there you go so this is definitely about it if you're trying to get this i'm going to put link in the description where you can get the build if you're also thinking about where you can get this pretty cool car and maybe get a couple more you know assets like this then i'm also going to put a link in the description where you'll be able to find this so tell me what you think about this pretty cool stuff in the comment section what do you think about the guys from you know tangent lab what do you think about amd i'd like to know what your thoughts are and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with the friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace